takes a little bit. Not much. All right, if you are sitting on the berm near a tree, if you can't hear me, raise your hand. <laughs> Can you guys hear okay back there? Are we good? Okay, great. Wow. Well, it would probably be the understatement of the year, right, to say, it's good to be together. Yeah. I have been asked really almost as a as a precursor to our praise and worship tonight to give a little background about the park. Um, this is LCU's Legacy Terrace at Virginia Bryant Park. Virginia Bryant uh, is my mom. She passed away in 2010 after a battle with some cancer. And a few years later, my brother-in-law, Gary Stevenson, Ken's brother, initiated the idea I think I can get through this, of what is happening right now. This is exactly what this area is for. And praise God for tonight and everything that you see around us that is a part of his creation. And that's a, that's a part of what I'm going to share with you, I, and I, I think it's written down so it should be fairly brief. I do want to mention that this is an area that our family is hopeful becomes a place where matriarchs and patriarchs can be honored. It's, it's not just mom. So there is a beautiful section off of the pond that Ken and his family have cultured in honor of his mom, Margie. Wonderful area. And our hope is that that, and, and there's other places within the park that are honoring others as well. And so that's the hope of, of the extension and, and the year as the years come and go uh, that that others can and will be honored for, for years and years to bring glory to God. So what I'm going to do is read to you something that my brother wrote. The park was dedicated here in September of last year. And this gives you a, a feel for mom. But more importantly, because this is the way she would want it, It gives you why this park is here, and it is here to, to reflect Christ and God. Speaking kind of from family, if we were to choose one word to describe mom, it would be beautiful. Uh, she was certainly beautiful on the outside, but what made her even more beautiful was that she loved and appreciated beautiful things. So I'd like to mention three of the beautiful things that she loved. The first is God's creation. God's creation is indeed a beautiful thing. Mom loved it dearly. She always had a deep appreciation for flowers, trees, rivers, rolling hills, all types of lovely landscapes. And she had us out in God's creation constantly, whether it was picnics along the Hudson River, trips to Arboretums, once in a lifetime visit to Bouchard Gardens, or just an everyday walk in the local park. She loved and appreciated God's creation, and she would have loved this place. The second is family. 
Family's also a beautiful thing, and mom loved her family. She was a loving wife to dad for 48 years, a loving mom to four kids. I have two sisters and a brother, and a loving nana to 12 grandkids. She was thoughtful, considerate, and really good at personalizing her time with each person. When you were with mom, you knew you were loved. But she not only loved and appreciated her earthly family, she loved and appreciated her spiritual family. Whether it was an intimate Bible study just with a few friends or teaching ladies Bible class or helping those who might normally go unnoticed, she genuinely loved and she cared for her spiritual, spiritual family. And last, but certainly not least, nothing was more beautiful to mom than Jesus. She's in his presence. Maybe that's the one reason she's okay. She's not here tonight, right? She loved him deeply. You could hear that love when she sang about him. We're going to have opportunity to sing together tonight. Mom would be right in the middle of that. You could feel her love when she prayed for you. You could see that love in her face as it lit up with joy when one of her friends said yes and put their Lord on in baptism. As she grew older, you could sense that Jesus became more and more beautiful to her. She loved and appreciated him so deeply because she knew that everything he does is beautiful. So, in honor of the beautiful person mom was, we encourage you to enjoy this beautiful place. Enjoy your beautiful family. And above all, enjoy our beautiful Savior, Jesus Christ. when you remember it's important to read emails. I'm going to be reading from Psalm 19. If you've got your app, go ahead and look there with me. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of the God. And the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom, leaving his chamber, and like a strong man, runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them. There's nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. 
The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, even dripping of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from my hidden fault. Keep back from your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not be dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgressions. And if you have your app open, read with me Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock, my redeemer. Let's pray. Father, I don't know what else to tell you, but thank you right now for being such a wonderful, awesome God, for blessing us as you have over these last couple of months, even as we've struggled in different ways, the way you've shown us your love, your mercy, your watch care, your provision. Father, we've had several that have suffered in different ways, but you've been right by their side, and we thank you for that. We thank you that you've blessed us with a family like this so that we can bless one another with the blessings you have given to each one of us. Father, we're thankful for tonight and the opportunity to see one another face to face, to be with one another, to raise our voices together with one another, to honor you and praise you and glorify you and we hope as you deserve. So Father, listen to our hearts tonight. We pray that this will be a sweet taste in your mouth. It will be a sweet smell in your nostrils. It will be a sweet sound to your ears. And that as you look down on us, you will be pleased with your children tonight. Thank you, Father, for everything that you do and are, everything that you will do in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand up while we sing. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation, and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration, and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. The splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great. 
is in his hand, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is thy God, sing with me how great is thy God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. There is beyond the azure blue, a God concealed from human sight, he tints the skies with heavenly hue and frame the worlds with his great mind. There is a God, he is alive in him we live and we survive. From the star God created man, he is our God, the great I am. Our God, whose Son upon a tree, our life was willing there to give, that He from sin might set man free, and evermore with Him could live. As we wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever, our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God, you will not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak, you comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. And I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days, and I will follow you all of my days. share with you uh, some family news and notes um, and congratulations to all the high school graduates um, for 2020 sorry you've missed out on uh, some of the pomp and circumstance of this time but I uh, hope you'll be blessed 
Remember that this upcoming Sunday, the 31st, we will have an 8 a.m. and 10.30 assembly with no Bible class in between. Uh, practice, safe practices. I'm looking around, and you all have done well tonight, as far as I can tell, and that's, uh, that's great. More details for this Sunday's assembly are coming um, online tomorrow, so look at the church website for that uh, to find out what more things you may need to know for this upcoming uh, Sunday. Uh, senior gifts will be accepted in the church office between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. Monday through Friday until June 12th. They're kind of lined up in the uh, office hallway that you can leave senior gifts if you'd like to do that. Senior Sunday is going to be Sunday, June 14. So if all goes well between now and then, uh, we will get to celebrate finally uh, and um, commission charge our seniors on that day. And remember, Father's Day is on June 21st. Um, send me an email letting me know why you respect and admire your father so we can honor, honor fathers that day. I think the first time I heard us talk about the, get the idea of us gathering in a setting like this, um, this is about what it, what I envisioned. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful sight. Uh, for those of you who haven't had a chance to stand up here and look back, Laurie took a picture, so she'll send you a picture if you want one. But it's a great, beautiful sight to see your faces and to be part of God's creation. Um, I don't think we let allow dogs in the church building, so it's uh, kind of nice to be able to bring your dog with you. Nobody wore their pajamas. That's good. But this is a great opportunity for us to be together. It was during World War II that Winston Churchill was credited with saying, never waste a good crisis. You've probably heard those words used in reference to the COVID-19 during this time. Some of it's been used for good, others have used it for political gain. It means that during challenging times when things are going wrong and you need quick answers to uncertain questions, you're allowed to think outside the box, offer unusual solutions, and take more risks than normal. I'm thankful that uh, our staff in particular has been very creative during this time, coming up with ways to keep us connected. Uh, I'm just a small piece in that uh, puzzle, but I'm thankful for the staff and the work that's been done there. I'm thankful for the encouraging words you all have, ga have given. But I don't want this crisis to be wasted either, because I've been reminded of a few things during this crisis that um, I don't want to forget, and I hope the same is true for you. And I want to mention three of those things tonight. The first one is this. Boring is good for the heart, mind, soul, and strength. Let me say it again. Boring is good for the heart, mind, soul, and strength. A common cry from children, especially during summertime, is, I'm bored. There's nothing to do. My children quickly learn never to say that to their dad because I was always able to find them something to do. Paul wrote to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 and 12. He said, make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business and working with your hands just as we instructed you before. The people who are not believers will respect the way you live and you will not need to depend on others. So during this time, we've had to be more creative maybe than usual. We've taken more walks. I've noticed that once things reopened, there are not as many people out walking as there was during the stay at home. We've been able to play more games as families. We've had deeper conversations. It thrills me to know that there are families here at Greenlawn who during the time of the Zoom assemblies, because they were there together right after the sermon was over and because there were questions to talk about, 
they were able to digest and internalize more of the lesson than they had been able to do in the past. It's been a Sabbath time for many of us. And many of us have discovered that we needed and enjoyed what one person called a break from the busyness of secularism. You may say, well, what does that mean? What the person was talking about is the fact that sometimes we get so immersed in the day-to-day -day activities of job, bills, sports, kids' activities that we give little thought to God and little thought to what's going on in our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our bodies. We're in such a rush. We're so busy that we never talk and evaluate about what's inside. In fact, over this time, I've heard multiple people talk about this being a chance to evaluate their lives and to spend more time with God. Hopefully, because of this, we are more healthy physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. The second thing I've been reminded of in the midst of all this, the golden rule is still golden. The golden rule is still golden. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 12, treat others as you want them to treat you. Stay-at-home orders weren't just to protect yourself. It was to protect vulnerable people in hospitals and nursing homes and their own home where they were vulnerable. Wearing a mask was not to protect me, and if you're wearing a mask, it's, it's not protecting you. It's inadequate. The, uh, the, the, the particles get through if there's a virus, but it can help protect others from your coughs or sneezes or shouts. Washing hands was so we wouldn't unwittingly pass the virus to someone else. In Philippians 2.4, Paul said, Do not be interested only in your own life. Be interested in the lives of others. Some people think only of their freedoms, only of their rights. I want to remind you that people of God think about what is good for others. And then finally, I'm reminded, emergency solutions are meant to be temporary. Closing businesses. Not hugging your grandchildren. I know many of us have been fighting the impulse that we have when we see one another to go up and hug, and we've just kind of had to drop our arms and go on. Greeting each other with six feet distance. We've never faced a situation quite like this, so we've had to learn as we go. Some things we may want to keep in the midst of all this that we've learned and we've, we've created. And some things we, we may want to keep, but we know we need to let them go. Some of you have really enjoyed the casual and formal home gatherings, PJs on the patio with coffee. I'm so thankful for Zoom. It has allowed us to connect imperfectly through the crisis. But like a lot of people, I'm ready for in-person connection. As someone said, Christianity is a team sport. Ephesians 4, 11, and 12 says, Christ chose some of us to be apostles, prophets, missionaries, pastors, and teachers so that his people would learn to serve and his body would grow strong. Christ became flesh and blood to connect with us and to create a community and for us to return, and so we have a need to return to it when that is safe. Gathering, loving, serving together is God's plan. I don't know what you've been reminded of or learned in the midst of this, but I would love to know what you have learned and been reminded of. Some of us in our family here at Green Lawn have had to say goodbye to people that we love during this time. We haven't been able to have the usual life celebrations and supports. Betty Huddle, 
member here for more than 50 years died during this time. Bobby Hensterling, special to a lot of women in particular. Sonny Jordan, I miss him coming into the office on Monday morning, counting the money and always having some kind of joke to tell. Nadine Ham, we thought Jim was the one who was sick. And then Nadine ends up being the one who dies. You know, it can feel lonely in the cemetery, but the cross is still God's greatest testimony of his love for us no matter what the crisis. So give thanks. Remember and keep your eyes on Jesus. God bless you. Hello, family. If you'll read with me from Ephesians chapter 3, uh, starting in verse 14. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Awesome, holy God, I too want to voice my thanks. Um, my thanks for us being able to gather together, even if it's distance. Um, God, I am so thankful to see these smiling faces. Um, I didn't realize how emotional I would be being back together to worship you with this family, but I am so thankful for that. God, I pray as we continue in this time that we would embrace it, that we would um, just just soak it in, God, but also that we'd be, we'd be able to sing our hearts fully and openly to you. God, we thank you. We give all glory to you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all the I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. A common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond, holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common joy. In the truth of God's word, a common love for each other, a common gift to the same, a common bond holding us to the Lord. 
a common stream when we're weary a common hope for tomorrow a common joy in the truth of God's word love one another for love is of God he who loves is born of God and knows God he who does not love does not know God for God is love God is love love is all One more time. Love the Lord. Thy God with all thy heart. With all thy soul. All thy strength. All thy mind. Love the Lord. Thy God with all thy heart. For God is love, God is love, God is love. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the fish shall be sighed. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound. And the Lord shall descend, even so it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well. It is 
Let's all stand for this last song, please. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all head to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us sin be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toes of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. And the Lord's people said together, Amen. Good evening, church family. Uh, it's an honor and a blessing to see each of you here today. And, uh, you know, I want to thank a few people. You know, I know whenever you start thanking people, you're going to leave somebody out, so I'm going to apologize ahead of time. But I just want to thank all the staff at Green Lawn, the assembly cluster, Jared and Chris for, for keeping us connected as a church family and, uh, and just giving us the resources that we need to, to edify one another, but most importantly to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to honor God. And thank you for all those uh, that, have, that have gone uh, to the extra level to help uh, keep us connected. Thank you for doing that. And, and you know, I'm reminded of a, of a passage in the Bible that says, Rejoice always. Pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus, and do not quench the Spirit. And I can tell you through all the this crisis and this pandemic that God's Spirit is not quenched. God's the same, and His hope or our hope in Him and our assurance in Jesus Christ never goes away, no matter how great the pandemic or how great the crisis. So, praise be to God for that. And, and again, it's it's an honor and a and a blessing to see each of you, and, and let's go to God in prayer, giving thanks for all that he's blessed us with. Let's pray. Eternal Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time uh, that we can come together to sing songs of praise to your name, to, to uh, study your word and to learn and to grow from it, and most importantly, Lord, to honor you and to glorify you and to worship you. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would be with all those that are struggling with this COVID virus. Uh, we pray for, for healing, for, for comfort, for peace, for strength. Uh, as, as those that have, have this virus deal with it, we, we give thanks to all of our healthcare workers and all those frontline workers that, that risk their lives daily to, to protect us and to, and to help those that, that are dealing with it, Lord. And we pray continued blessings for them and for those families that have been affected. Lord, we pray for the Hensling family, the Jordan family, the Huddle family and the Ham family, as those that we have lost uh, through these last two months, Lord, we we uh, we we mourn for those families and we'll miss those uh, members of our the strong members of our church family. We thank you for their legacy that they've left for us and their example. And Lord, may uh, may we remember them at this time as well, Lord. And Lord, we pray for those um, seniors and those uh, that lost. Uh, parts of their senior year, uh, both in high school and in college and in other phases of their life, Lord, and, and uh, may any of these gaps that, that have been lost, uh, may we all look to you and, and point to your son, and may our relationship to you through your son be strengthened to, through any crisis, through any pandemic, through any situation in our life. May you be honored and glorified uh, as you are the steady rock. Lord, we love you, and, and we give thanks in all circumstances. Lord, we thank you for your healing hand, and we thank you for this church family, Lord, and the power 
uh, of Christians leaning on one, one another and to encourage one another, uh, how you've instituted this church, and we're, we're thankful for that, and we thank you for blessing our church so much, and Lord, we just pray that we would live lives that honor you and glorify you, and may we have wisdom and discernment and a pure heart and to be led by your spirit in all things. And Lord, may we, we may we honor you as we leave here. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.